Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls Remastered. Um, we're going to pick up today with some more out-of-sequence things, I guess? Because, yeah, we do a couple things that I, uh, I think most people normally wouldn't do. I wish I had more Titanite shards. Oh, that's right, I'm online. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. I'm not going to be human because there are no invasions. But what that was, was while you're playing online... If someone rings one of the Bells of Awakening and you're nearby, you hear it. So that was somebody ringing the bell up here at the Gargoyles, which we are not going to fight the Gargoyles. We are going to run across and into this other little church. Because there is another... I'm actually probably not going to fight the Gargoyles for a little bit. I usually save them until after I do the next part of my weird out-of-sequence run. I don't know why I do it this way, I just do. It's I can get some upgrade mats, I can kind of get some souls, and get a couple other things. But, any hoosin', we have a new bonfire here in the Undead Burg, and we hear the clinkety clackety clank of a hammer. Hurrah! Most weapons and armor are mighty sturdy indeed. But every hunk of metal has its breaking point. If you notice durability running low, it's time to repair. You can ask a blacksmith like myself, or do it on your own with a grindstone. The nice thing about weapons, they never betray you. So pay them a little respect, eh? There are two types. Reinforcement and there's ascension. Reinforcement is simple. It strengthens the weapon and nothing more. A simple task for any blacksmith. Hell, you could even do it yourself with a smith box. But ascension's a finer art. It alters the weapon's properties. Ascension is the territory of you blacksmiths. A smith box just won't do the trick. Start out with reinforcement. When that loses its charm, you can consider ascension. You've noticed this land is flush with the mad and wicked. You won't make it through the night without employing my services. <laughs> hmm. You can forge armor just like you do weapons. Forging armor is even easier than forging weapons. Whether you forge weapons or armor first, well, that's up to you. But nobody wants to see you go hollow. So whatever you do, you better do it well. <laughs> so this is Andre of Astora. He is one of the, what, one, two, he's one of, what, four blacksmiths we can interact with, and each one of them does a specific thing. Andre is for, once we give him a certain item, for holy and occult weapons. What we are going to do is he is going to upgrade our Claymore to plus two. He's also going to repair our equipment. And I'm actually going to buy some shards from him. How many can I buy? Five? I'm going to buy four. Because that should be able to get this to plus four. Oh, if I had three, I could get a plus five Claymore, and that actually would not be bad. Don't get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. Because <laughs> I need to get this thing to plus ten anyway. Do I have any souls on me? No. All right, no big deal. But Andre sells some weapons, and you can buy some other things from him. We are going to come down here where this boy is. We are not fighting this boy, though. I'm positive that I could kill him. I just have no need or desire to currently, aside from wanting souls. But what we want to do is... I still don't do a whole hell of a lot of damage. Namely because I don't have... Well, this isn't upgraded that much, and my strength isn't that high to make use of the scaling. But I should two-shot these guys. 
Ah, blooming purple moss clumps. I will probably trade with Snuggly quite a bit off screen. Like I said, I will link to the wiki. It'll be, it'll, I guess I could also do it in this episode, but in the previous episode, the description, there should be a link to the wiki to the trading list for Snuggly. These boys are called Ints. I think they're called Ints. Yeah, they should be Ints. They are tree monsters that like to whip you. They play Whip It, and we kill them. They also drop the different uh, mosses. Something you can do, and actually, since I'm currently online, I think this message is letting you know. Try jumping. Um, not here, no. This will kill you. But over here, I think it's actually right where this item is. You can survive a fall down there. And we'll be going to that spot anyway, so there's no point in jumping. And there are some other messages kindly telling us hidden path ahead. Illusory wall ahead. Yes, there is. And there's a bonfire. So yeah, they were kind enough to tell us that there was a bonfire. Another online thing are bloodstains, which you check them and you can see where and how you can guess on how another player might have died. This is a big old trap. You go in there and grab that item, all of these ints will wake up. So we are going to murder all of the ints before we go for the item. Because we are smart undead. Although my intelligence is super low, so I'm not smart undead. But it's just a soul. This is not a fog gate for a boss. This is just a fog wall. And this thing, hidden path ahead. Yes, there is. This is a living tree. We are going to murder the tree. We have now murdered the tree. And now we get land stingrays that usually drop um, green blossoms. But we're going to make a trip down yonder way. There's another living tree. This tree, they do nothing. To my knowledge, I, I don't know what this one is here for. He might drop something, I don't know. He does not. But there are a few things floating around that we can get. I do not, I didn't want to do that. There's a soul over that way, but I don't want to fight or deal with that stone warrior. Le Stone Knight. Although there is one up here as well. Who I think might actually... No, he's not aggroed yet. What I want is this... The wolf ring, and then this, you can just jump right over. One of the special rings granted to the four knights of Gwyn. The wolf ring belongs to Artorius the Abyss Walker. Artorius had an unbendable will of steel and was unmatched with a great sword. That boosts our poise. Poise is a stat. You can see it up there in the top right corner. Basically, the heavier your armor, the more poise you get. The more poise you have, the less likely you are to get staggered by weapons. If you have a shit ton of poise, you're not going to get staggered by anything. If you have no poise, someone could breathe on you and you're going to get staggered. And Artorius is one of the four knights of Gwyn. Gwyn is the Lord of Sunlight, and in the opening cutscene... They talked about Gwyn, the Witch of Isolith, Nido, and the Furtive Pygmy... The Furtive Pygmy kind of really doesn't get brought up a whole lot. He's unforget. He's forgettable, basically, is his kind of his thing. But Gwyn, Nido, and the Witch of Isolith all... It says that they found the Lord Souls within the flames. Um, this is a snake. He will attack you. And that is a partisan. 
they found the Lord Souls, they gained the power of Lords, and they waged wars against the Everlasting Dragons. And Gwyn had four knights under his... Well, he had war, but I mean, he had four knights under his command. Artorius... Uh, yeah, Knight Artorius, or Artorius the Abyss Walker, the Lord's Blade Kieran, Hawkeye Goth, and Dragon Slayer Ornstein. And we will actually end up meeting pretty much all of them throughout this playthrough. Do I want... Nope, we're going through. This shield should be more than enough, but this is Le Moonlight Butterfly. who does basically purely magic damage. So that's why I wanted this shield to be able to block some of the stuff he does. A medium roll would be better for this, because it's actually easier with a medium roll to dodge one of his attacks. If you have ranged options, a bow, um, pyromancies, miracles, I guess sorceries, you can attack him while he's doing this. Oop, I rolled too soon. Come on, dude. Either do your other attack or land. So after a while, he'll get tired because it's really hard being a mystical, magical butterfly. He will eventually land and you can attack him. Bro, you're getting on my nerves now. Yeah, that move is actually easier to dodge, in my opinion, with a medium roll. He will land, and you can then proceed to wail upon him. When you see him starting to glow, back away. Because he's going to do his little explosion, and it hurts. This might take a little longer, because, I, like I said, I am a little under-leveled compared to what I normally am. I usually am a little higher, and I usually have my weapon at plus five. And with the scaling and everything, I would usually be doing way more damage, but this is fine. It'll take a few runs, but he's doing the Kamehameha. This is the main reason I wanted the Crest Shield. Oh, he's going over. Yeah, if you have a bow, magic, stuff like that, you can attack him while he's doing this. He's gonna stay topped off. Ow, ow. Whip! Dude, you need to land so that I can... Whoa, why are you freaking out there, bro? I thought I could get one more. It might take one more pass after this one. I might get lucky and be able to kill him in this next pass. I don't know why I went from one random song to fucking Mario. Come on. Land. I want to kill you. Doing the Kamehameha. Hit. Come on, mine dude. Really? Ooh, I normally don't see that attack because I've normally got him dead by now. Oh god, I'm gonna die, aren't I? So yeah, this boss is essentially a chump. He 
he would be dead on the next uh, pass. If I had a bow, I would pluck at him, but I, I have a crossbow. <sighs> Kamehameha. Blip. Kamehameha. Bloop. I would prefer it if you landed so that I can murder you. Okay, that hit me. Blip. Ow. Will you land so I can fucking kill you? Damn. Goddamn moonlight butterflies. So yeah, that is the moonlight butterfly. And we got the soul of the moonlight butterfly. What we really wanted, though, is up here. And we got 10,000 souls. I can get this thing to plus five. Watchtower basement key and the divine ember and a homeward bone. Ember required for weapon ascension. Divine embers are property of the church and intended for divine blacksmiths. Ascend plus five standard. Oh, it doesn't have to only have to be plus five. Weapon to divine weapon can be reinforced plus five. Divine weapons are for undead hunting. Use against undead and pawns of necromancers. Key to the basement of the Watchtower in the Undead Burg. The basement of the Watchtower forms a stone cell. There are rumors of a hero turned hollow who was locked away by a dear friend for his own good, of course. And then... Soul of the Mystical Moonlight Butterfly, which flitters in the Dark Root Garden. Special beings have special souls. The butterfly's soul is a creation of Seath the Scaleless, used to acquire a huge amount of souls or to create a unique weapon. So, the Moonlight Butterfly is an experiment of Seath the Scaleless, who, if you watched the intro cutscene, which I did, you should have watched it, he betrayed his kind, and he joined with Gwyn and the others, and Gwyn actually grant, granted Seath a fragment of his Lord's soul, and he also made Seath a duke. We'll see uh, the duke's archives, Seath's base, basically, later. Oh, uh, do I want to just homeward bone out or do I want to because I do want to go talk to Andre so we're just going to use a we're going to ET bone home but we can make a weapon later on out of the moonlight butterfly's horn or we can eat it and gain souls I don't give a shit about the moonlight butterfly I'm not going to make its weapon so guess what we eating that motherfucker because I think it gives you like I think 8,000 souls or something. Oh, no, it only gives you 1,200. Okay, the Moonlight Butterfly soul is pointless. My, that's a rare ember you have there. I've seen one of those before. It's the ember of a divine blacksmith. Might you consider leaving that with me? I can produce divine weapons with a flame such as that. Absolutely. So I need three more shards. Now, I don't think... Because I need a green titanite shard. And you only get those... I will be back in just a second. I actually need to check. I think you don't start getting them till the depths. So two seconds and I'll be back.
All right, so, yep, we won't get any green Titanite until the depths, which is where we're going to be heading next anyway. What Divine does, if we look at our weapon here, it splits our damage between physical and magic. It lowers the stat scaling from, of strength and dex, but it gives it faith scaling. And it also gives it another auxiliary effect where it does damage more damage against undead enemies, and it will stop skeletons in the catacombs from reforming. Normally, I would go down to the catacombs about now. Because normally, I actually have a weapon that is pre-divine, but I don't want to use that weapon. So, I guess we will go ahead and level up for one. Can I get 25? Damn it, I want 25 faith. So I'm going to get my faith to 25, and it's going to sit for a little bit. And then I've got to get my dex, or my um, strength to 32, but I don't want to ignore my aux stats. So I guess what we're going to do is we are going to head up into the church, and we will do the gargoyles. And then we will make our way to the depths. I will get my holy enchanted weapon. And I guess while we're down there, we might as well just do... Blight Town, and then when we come back, before we head to the next actual, like, required point, we will head to, um, the Catacombs. So this room can be a huge, huge pain in the- Why did you follow me so far? What the fuck? I want the poke. So these boys are being buffed by the channeler. This room can be a huge pain if you're not prepared. But this enemy here, the channeler, he does not respawn. He is a unique enemy. Ugh, and he's now dead. He has a chance to drop the tr that trident he's using. And it's R2, two-handed R2 attack. Is the goofy dance that they do, and it buffs you. There's a boulder knight, and there's also a man that we want to rescue up here. See, when they do that, if you attack them, they will try to parry you. So I recommend not attacking them when they're doing that stance. Unless you want to get parried. Ooh, he dropped the titanite shard and a buckler. I need neither of Well, I always need titanite shards, but I shouldn't need any more regular titanite. I'm going to need green. But up here, oh, then I am in love. sorry, I didn't mean to skip his dialogue. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without a course. We picked up a mystery key where I don't remember, but we can rescue this boy. Thank you. Yes, sincerely. I am the Knight Lautrec of Cadiz. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. So that's Lautrec. He is a knight from the land of Karim. Which we are going to meet another NPC soon who is from Karim. And Lautrec was locked up. I wonder why he could have been locked up. Well, spoilers, Lautrec is a scumbag. And he has a quest that involves him. Basically, he's like your, the silent chief from Demon Souls. Or Navlon. Oh, I guess not like Navlon. But he's like your... 
uh, Yurt's the only one I can really compare him to, but he's going to... After we ring this bell and the bell down below, I'm going to make this fight trivial. Um, he will murder the Firekeeper at Firelink Shrine, and we have a quest to go hunt him down, get her soul back, and revive her. We are not going to let Lautrec do that. We are going to kill Lautrec early. Because I'm not dealing with that on a first playthrough. Oh, I skipped the cutscene. I'm sorry. I'm so used to it. But this is the Bell Gargoyle that I was not expecting to hit me. And he is one of the enemies in the game that has a... Where are you? That has a tail weapon. So if you hit his tail... Oh my god, really, dude? Sit still. Yeah, you can see, especially with the lightning buff, the amount of damage we do to this boy is nuts. And after you get that one down to a certain amount of health, a second one spawns that's already at half health, and he's missing his tail. So this boy is done. This fight is trivial, if you're prepared for it. They also have a chance to drop their halberd and the helmet and the shield that they're using. Later on in a later portion of the game in Anorlando, you will fight a few more of those as like kind of non-standard enemies. And I think they respawn. I don't know if they respawn or not. But they also have a chance to drop their gear. So if you, for some reason, if you want to use the gargoyle halberd or you want their helmet or their shield or whatever, they'll drop it. Yeah, the Belfry Gargoyles are simple. Oh, I'm sorry, they're not Belfry Gargoyles in this one. They're Bell Gargoyles. They're simple. But if you use the lightning, uh, the gold pine resin that you picked up, they're weak, incredibly weak to lightning. Oh, well, hello there, sir. You weren't here before. Greetings. I am Oswald of Kareem, the past. Thou art a friend. For me, um, come as thou to confess. But for me, evil sin is my friend. So. This is Oswald of Karim. He is the partner, and he sells a few rings, Blood Bite and Poison Bite, Ring of Sacrifice. He sells Velka's Talisman, which is useless for us. He also sells Karmic Justice, a Miracle of the Black-Haired Witch Velka. Temporary auto counters versus heavy damage. For each sin, there is a punishment, and it is the task of Goddess Velka to define the sin and mete out the punishment. He also sells Purging Stones, which are useful. They break curse. Uh, he sells indictments, which you can put an indictment on a player that invades you and kills you. You can put an indictment on them, and they will be put into the Book of Guilty, and they can be hunted down by a, another covenant. Everybody from Kyrim is creepy. He can also absolve your sins if you kill a... NPC, you will sin, and you can use him to absolve your sin. You can also use him to safely abandon a covenant. What we are going to do is... Do I want to... I'm just going to walk back. We are going to wander our asses back to the bonfire near... Actually, we'll just go down to Firelink. Since it's right there. And we can take care of two things. Leveling up and Lautrec. And using this Firekeeper Souls, and then we will end the episode.
Oswald also has a line. I don't know where it is or when he says it. They're not here yet. That's about Patris. Remember I said Patris is a scumbag. Patris is a scumbag, and Oswald says something like, that man is drenched in sin. We'll learn more about Patris and why he's a scumbag soon. Is Lautrec here? He is. All right, so we're going to talk to Lautrec. He gives us a Sunlight Medal, which is a Covenant item. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to... I skipped his dialogue. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. So Lautrec, be wary of Liar. <laughs> yeah, Lautrec is a scumbag, and if you let him live, he will kill Anastasia. That's Anastasia. And you will lose this bonfire until you recover her soul. I'm not going to let Lautrec kill her on this playthrough. I will try to show off that quest in, like, bonus content, but the easiest way to kill Lautrec is to kick him. <laughs> now Lautrec is dead. Lautrec drops some stuff. So what you want to do is save and quit and return, and you can get Lautrec's goodies. He drops a very, very, very good ring. That I Did they change the name in the remaster? I don't remember if they did. Drops five humanity and the ring of favor and protection. He drops the fap ring. What the fap ring does, a ring symbolizing the favor and protection of the goddess Fina, known in legend to possess fateful beauty. This ring boosts its wearer's HP, stamina, and max equip load, but breaks if it's ever removed. That is a fantastic ring. It increases our stamina, our equip load, and our health, but if we remove it, it breaks. We will also give Anastasia our Firekeeper soul. Lautrec worships the goddess Fina. That armor he's wearing is supposed, it's called the Armor of Favor, I think, and it's supposed to be her embracing her knights. But again, we're not letting Lautrec uh, be a douche, so. Just give me my 25 faith. I do kind of want to bring my endurance and stuff up. I should be okay on other stats, so I've kind of got it in my head how I want my spread to be. But anyway, that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know I did, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Till then, take it easy and have a good one. Later!